Boom. Nice shorts. Thank you. Really good. Anaki, that's a, um, my friend's, one of our friend's merch. He just yeah. started and he's already hitting us with promos. Yep. Mate. Thanks for our sponsor, Anaki. <laughs> Send us some more shorts. But I actually like the shorts, so that wasn't planned. So I'm going to start with questions. Where did the footballs came from? You mean the the name? The name. The name. Why? Why you choose boss? Because, in a way, we are the boss of our life, right? Whether we like it or not, you're making the decisions. You know, like there's nothing worse to me than when someone says, "I have to speak to my boss first. I cringe inside. I really do. I'm like. Unless it's <laughs> unless I'm speaking to a girl and then I'm like I'm the boss, <laughs> right? Like, Usually but, they are the boss. But in reality, yeah. So fit boss came from because I like the idea of being a boss, right? Like we are the boss of our life, whether we like it or not. So since we're in control, you're responsible for everything. Now, if I'm responsible for everything, I can control how my life is going to look at least as much as possible. So if I can control it, then I want to look like a boss. I want to feel like a boss. I want to operate like a boss. I want to be a boss, right? So Fit Boss came about because as well, growing up for me personally, I never felt like I had a good role model, you know? Of a dad? What, yeah. what your dad used to do? I mean, I wasn't really in, in touch with my dad a lot of my upbringing, you know, I lived mostly with my with mom. With your mom? Yeah, very just feminine, just very chaotic environment, you know, and I seeked it when I was probably 17. I was really seeking for a male... Um, role, model. role model. You know, online. I would just closet myself and research. And wha- what do you think that might affect you now as an adult? And as, as an adult. Which, which element? Like not having a role model, the, f- the male role model back then. Oh, the what would affect people, that people that don't have the male role model at home? So how has it affected me? Yeah, or well, how does it affect people? Oh, it's, it's, I mean, look, it can go two ways, right? Like the, the natural repercussion is that if, someone gets too influenced, let's say, just by the mother figure, they can go too far that way. As in, if it's a man specifically, I'm going to talk for men, not for women, okay? If it's a man, in a way, you don't know how to set boundaries, right? Like, that was a big problem I used to have. I had no backbone. I struggled to speak up. I had no form of, like, assertiveness within myself. I was, I was a coward, man, you know? The teacher would call my name out in class. I would start tearing up because people were looking at me. Was a girl in a man's body? Literally, a girl in a man's body. Exactly. And that's, that's the repercussion, right? Like you don't learn good work ethic. You don't get exposed to the harsh reality of the world. And when you do, it's a rude awakening. And I had a lot of pain around that, like a lot of pain. I have so much pain in my upbringing but the reason why I say it can go two ways is because that pain is also uh, my power, man, honestly. Because I utilized it the right way. I used it as that, that pain to project me completely the other way, like completely. And when, when do you start changing? When do you start seeking for self-development to like, I want to change my life, I want to be the boss? Look, it, start, it started with fitness. That was my step one when I was 15. Um, I was... I remember I was, it was like when I got in my first relationship, you know, and I was with my ex at the time and there was one moment I had my arms around her from the back and I looked at my arms and I was just like, holy fuck, I'm skinny. I'm a skinny bitch. Skinny bitch. I had a little belly, by the way, so it was, it was just skinny fat, <laughs> right? So that was one. That was my moment of like shame, right? I need a change. Yes. Um, I don't know if that's really what caused me to change that moment, but I remember it clearly, so it meant something to me. But then there was another moment, sports change rooms. I had no idea. 
But one of my friends took his shirt off, chiseled, just blocky abs. Like he was into fighting and the whole Rocky kind of thing. And I remember I saw it. And at this point, I've like never seen muscle in person, you know? Like my, my family is kind of overweight, you know what I'm saying? So that's like my first time. And I was, mem- I was mesmerized. I remember just looking. I was like, like, what the fuck is that? I want that. Yeah, I was so impressed. And I was like, dude, you, you never told me. I'm like, why didn't you tell me? Because that, that, something like that was so big to me. I'm like, wouldn't you at least let me know that you were fucking jacked? <laughs> and it's just like pulling it off, man. I was like, holy fuck. So that was, that was another pivotal moment. And then one day I got home. So because I lived with my mum, at this point it was just her, but I shared a room with my brother. I've got a brother and a sister. I shared a room with my brother. I shared a room with... How old is your brother? He's four years older than me. Exact same birthday. 22nd of October. Four years apart. 22nd of October? Yeah. Four years apart. Same fucking day. Wow. Why? A lot of fights. Huh? A lot of fights. No? There's... There were some. (laughs) Some. (laughs) You know? And uh, I shared a room with him most of my life, you know? And then you left home or you held... Not, when not you yeah, there's home. actually a big story to this, you know. So I remember one day I came home and he was curling a five kilo dumbbell and I saw it and I was like, like I think part of me knew I should have been working out. Your brother was doing curls? Yeah, like he just had some dumbbells. Like he wasn't fully into it, but he was doing something. And I think it was just like, you know, deep down when you know you should be doing something, you know. Everyone knows it. Everyone yeah, knows it. It's, it's your, your subconscious mm-hmm. or your conscious speaking to you, right? Uh, I actually I navigate most of my life now listening to that voice, right? Because that's the voice that's telling the fucking truth, <laughs> whether, you, whether you like it or not. And my, that voice was telling me, call that fucking dumbbell. So I called it till I literally couldn't anymore. <laughs> I, was, I, I got jealous. Like I, I used How to, old were you? 15. I used to get jealous a lot as a kid because I... I never felt like accomplished in any way. Like I said, repercussion of just feminine, a bit too much feminine. Like I never really like had things, I, f- I never felt like I had things going for me. I'd, there was nothing you could say, Will's good at this, this, like literally nothing at the time that I was aware of. So I was just like, fuck man, I need to start working on myself. And that was my step one. Start curling and I just got obsessed. I think when I broke that barrier, I was like, this is my ticket. Like I had a very fucking clear vision. I was like, I'm going to get ripped. I'm going to get jacked. Like, I don't care how long this fucking takes me. It's happening, even if it's 10 years. You know, like, there was no other option. Man, it was my way out, bro. It was as long as you know that you're going to get it, doesn't matter how long you get it. Dude. Like I, was te- I was talking to Jason. Sorry if I interrupt you. That's fine. He sent me a, a post, like, write 300 posts, one goes viral. Send 300 job interview, get one job. And, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't, it's just a matter of time. If you really know what you want, you knew you're going to have that physique. And you might have it right now, but now you have another standard, right? Oh, yeah. It's always leveling up. But my reasons are different now, you know? Like you really have, you have to see it before you achieve it. I, I saw it. Mm-hmm. You know, I felt it. It's just visualization, right? It is. V- visualization is just seeing it and really feeling it and be like, all right, I know I'm going to get there. Like you, you, in a way, you, you actualize it first. I got a question for you. Like, um, some people you can't visualize you're doing something. Like, I could visualize myself with a good, good physique, but what about if I can't visualize myself rich or wealthy with a lot of money? What should I do? Get around people who make a shit ton of money and realize they're not much Boom. different. Why? Because you access that. You have access to that. As soon as you like, let's say, we're going to drive with the guy that has a Ferrari. You jump in the other seat, you're in there, in the Ferrari. You create the... Yeah, you got to get around it, man. Like, I, I've got friends you would never fucking tell. You would never tell. A mill a month. Easy. It's Clock funny work. you said that, man. Because my friend was like, he likes jet ski. I didn't like it, but now I wanted to. Yeah. Just because he likes it. You want to like, I want a jet ski. Why not? Like you you start opening to the realm of possibilities, you know, like it's so easy, at least when you're, when you haven't passed it to just think from a place of scarcity, you know, everything's just reserved. It's like a contractive energy. It's not expansive at all. 
But when you start hanging around people who have really just like accomplished those things, like it's just expansive. It's why the fuck not? Why not? Why not? Like it's not even that they need it. It's just like the fact that we can, why the fuck not? And why, like there's no need to justify it. It's just like, why the fuck not? It's a possibility. It's in you, the the wealth you think it's you. you just gotta open oh, yeah. the prosperity in you. It's just in you. As I saw you working the other day in the planning, what about planning? What's planning for you, man? Is planning a big thing for you now planning. that you're the boss? You're the boss of your life. Planning. Planning. I I I do plan. I obviously I use calendar. Yeah. I have to, right? Because I got I got calls that get booked in. So I need to make sure those are obviously being put in the calendar. I prioritize what needs to be done the day before as well. So the night before you, you yes. plan your day, the next day? Yes, yes. The thing is, like I used to be very strict in regards to this hour is this. I don't do that anymore. I find it's better when I just have an order of priority of tasks and then I, dead, I just allow open spaces because that will allow... Um, deep work to happen can you give me an example like of your monday let's say your monday routine look it 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 just varies right because the morning to me first of all i'll train monday tuesday thursday saturday so before training i'll I'll wake up at like what five or six a.m i'll eat and then i'll go train you know that happens all the time it's just my time first thing in the morning that's a big key which is when, I, when I'm on a workout day, I do that shit first. I get that shit done. The physical stuff first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't like to leave that stuff till later. No way. Because things come up and there's too many variables at play later on. So I always do it first. What time do you wake up? You get up? Five or six. Yeah. But like that's, that's sometimes I just don't set an alarm anymore, you know? So it'll be. It'll nice. Be, yeah, yeah. That's just, very good. I don't, I don't set an alarm. So unless I like really have to, you know, but in, in most cases, naturally, yeah, natu- naturally, naturally, good, actually. naturally wake up. So yeah, I'll train and then I'll eat again after training. And then based on that, I might either have calls or I'll either work from home. But recently I've been driving to like a cafe or a hotel cafe lobby because I find I work way better productive yeah because at home i just it's too easy to get comfortable and when you're at home you have usually when you go to the same place every day you have the same thoughts the standard thoughts Uh, and what what i'm starting to notice about myself as well is that i like being around people same you know that's how we met yeah yeah like it's i feel more alive it's so funny man like Growing up, I, I was the most nervous motherfucker. Couldn't talk to anyone. Insecure. Insecure, antisocial. You low know, se- uh, low self confidence. During like lunch and all of this during school, isolate. I was in library. Ooh, reading books. That's good. Like fiction I books. like it. Just fantasy, bro. Mm. You know, I was reading Del Toro. You're hiding away. The Dude. books was just, just a distraction, eh? Hiding away, man. You're hiding Insecure. away from the girls. Insecure, hiding all the big I could boys. Have, dude, I would, I would shake talking to girls. Fifteen, thirteen. Dude, when I asked my first girlfriend out, I was like, I was shaking. I was like, I couldn't even talk. Wow. Yeah. Lucky she found it cute though. <laughs> and she's like, Oh, that's cute. Yes, I will. <laughs> but, dude, terrible. And you, the funniest bit was, I was never a good-looking kid, but when I hit puberty, <laughs> it, the, a shift happened. So what happened was I started getting attention for the first time. And even, like, the cool kids were like, oh, my God, Will sprouted. You know, like, they would say shit like that. I had no idea what to do with it, though. Like, I was still the awkward fucking nerdy <laughs> motherfucker. So I would have, like, you know, girls giving me some attention, and I'm just like, oh, fuck. So what happened was I had, like, massive imposter syndrome. I was like trying to be the cool guy, but I'm still the fucking nerd deep down because I was always the fucking nerd. I was just the antisocial, this, that. So I was getting attention, 
And I was trying to like keep a face. And th- this is very interesting though, because this really like, um, man, I was so, it was really hard for me to show myself and accept myself, you know? It was really hard. And um, I think that's where it started was because I was trying to look cool, live up to the standard of post-puberty, attention. But deep down, I'm like, I've got nothing in interest in common with these guys. I like video games. I like being a fucking nerd. I like this life. And I was scared to own it, bro. And you're scared to change it too. Yeah, like it was, it was just... Dude, most of my school life, I remember after I, I left, it felt like I awakened. It was, my, it was my ticket of, hey, you don't have to be anyone else anymore. You can... Just be who you are because no one knows the old version, Ooh. you know? That's why environment's so important. Wow. Um, because sometimes people really struggle. People, this is actually where we left off. People really struggle to, to change because they're in an environment. That they're going to judge you and be like, ooh, where well, are you Well, the thing going? is, it's, it's totally our fault. It's not the other people's fault. Like, sure, they'll be like, yeah, like, we see you as this person, but... You're in control of, like, when you change, like, don't be afraid to show it. It's just harder to because people see you a certain way. And when, and when you're going through that process and you do want to change, then you're going to get a little bit of backlash from some people. That's natural because you're this way. Why are you being weird? You, like, don't do that. Like, you, this is how we want you to be. This is how we've always seen you. But the moment you start outgrowing that, you know, some people might not respond well, Right? It's very hard. It's, there's, there's this resistance to it. It just makes it harder to really fly with your own wings, so to speak, right? So it's always easier if you really do want to embrace a change to just relocate, man, like get somewhere else. My biggest change was when I left Sydney and I came to Gold Coast because I, I knew I was already changing, but I was still isolating because I, I didn't know many people in common in regards to the goals that I had. But Gold Coast just allowed me to really like step into it, man. It really did. Like I had someone invite me and I was like, all right, screw it, let's go. I'm ready for it. And um, obviously moved away from my family and basically everyone. I was just like, fuck it, why not? And that's when I really stepped into becoming my own man from that point, you know? Up until that point, I was still a little boy. You know, still a little boy. I was, and I was reliant, I said, oh, man, when you grow up with just a mom, shit just like you expect shit to happen for you. Because the mom wants to help. We're going to do this, this, this. She, she tries to coddle you from the world, give you everything, wants you safe. But that's the problem. <laughs> that's the problem. That does harm. That's going to make you weak, man. Dude. You got to leave that. Weak. I was weak. Yeah. I was really weak. And I remember, man, like I, I left and I moved to Gold Coast. And I, I was li- living with one of my friends at the time. Uh, we're still friends, but like I was living with him back then, and uh, he was just like, "Bro, how?" You? He's like, "Did you notice you did that, or you didn't do this, and you didn't do that?" And it kept happening. I was like, "Fuck, I'm not even aware," and he was like in shock. He's like, "How the fuck do you not think of this shit?" I'm like, "Dude, I've just never had to." <laughs> I was a, I was just like a a fucking mama's boy, you know, and that was really. Uh, there was a lot of growth that happened. So when you want to change, change your environment first. Change your environment and get around the people who have the life that you want. Simple as that. It's simple. not hard. It's not hard. It's simple, but it's not easy because it's, oh, yeah. it's pressure. Yeah. And yeah. that pressure, that makes you a man. Turn the boys into men. Problems. Responsibility. Yeah. Jordan Peterson said that. You, you need to become it, a man, man and responsibility. You know how depressing it is when you don't have a responsibility? Yeah, when you don't have problems, no yeah. pressure. Life is just boring. Literally. Literally. Like, if, I, if I don't have something to do, I'm like trying to find something. Try to find I'm some like, problems. I'm like looking, I'm like, okay, well, like, what else can I do, you know? I need some headaches. Seriously. Seriously. Like, you, it, keeps you, it keeps you alive, man. Like we're, we're built to progress. You know what I'm saying? Like we're, we're built to adapt and progress. Yes. And, our body, reward, our body rewards us for it as well. Why do you think when you exercise, you feel good? It wants you to move. Because the natural dopamine hits. Yeah. Yeah. 
if, when you say comfortable, man, it's like people who are incredibly overweight. It's just when you choose that path of <laughs> instant gratification, dude, you are setting yourself Bro, up for a hard time. And you become so obsessed to grow that you start doing things that that's not normal anymore. People start, start calling you that you're a bit crazy, you're a bit insane. I think that that's how it's supposed to be. Because I was talking to someone, I was like, oh, I want to get an ice bath. People look at you like, oh, this guy wants to get in the cold water. <laughs> you're crazy. Nah, you're too normal, brother. This is fucking cold water, dude. Like, th this is the craziest thing to me. I understand what you're saying. because This is just cold water. And I know. It's fucking it. cold water. Like, don't be a pussy, man. Like you literally, can't handle cold water. How are you gonna handle big problems in your life if you can't handle even the cold, a cold water? Even a cold fucking shower. Have you even seen a cold shower? Like, can I put cold on the second half? Right, I don't need. What uh, the fuck are you talking about? You know, you know, like the way that you approach a cold shower is uh, how you approach fucking life. A bloody. If you want to dip your toes in and suss the temp, that's probably how you fucking approach life, motherfucker. Jump full fucking throttle into the cold shower. Don't be a pussy and expect like just. Fucking toughen up, brace for it, and do it. And do it consistently. Do it every fucking day. Don't be a bitch. I'm going to do and reward myself at the end. What the fuck is this shit, man? Like, oh, all right, uh, the phase of adaptation and blah, blah, blah. But now, fuck that. I don't even do it for the, the, the physical benefits. It's the mindset, right? Well, like, if you can't handle a cold water, or just a, a water, natural water, not even cold. <laughs> natural. It's natural. It's not even cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just... Natural water. I used to get fucking how, brain freezes. How can bro. you handle problems? <laughs> I would get brain freezes from the showers, man. Like literally, like to the point where your head feels like it's gonna explode. I'm just like, fucking do it, mate. You know, I used to when I used to PT, I would be driving to the gym and just cause it was like peak fucking winter. I would cold shower and then in the car, it's like fucking freezing cold. I'm sure someone else would be like, well, it's not that cold compared to Antarctica. I was in Sydney, yeah, and then. So it was like 4 a.m. I'm in my car and I just go aircon, cold, full blast, take my shirt off. Why? Why the fuck not? Just cause. So in that whole car and I'm just fucking, I've got like a client that I'm going to show up to and I'm in the car fucking shaking, like gritting my teeth until I drive to the gym. No reason. And you know what the fucking funniest part is? Is like I did it once and then the next week when I had to like wake up that early again for that client, my brain talking about, about the conscious again was like yeah but last week you did it if you don't do it this time you're a bitch and i was like fuck i have to do it again so it became a ritual <laughs> and that's the thing when you know there there's like a better life out there or there's there's a challenge and a kpi you have to hit to be a certain level it's very hard to go back it's very hard man because now i'll be driving in that seat and i'll be like you bitched out all right, as a hit to the confidence, hit to the self-esteem. It's funny, man. I remember I was um, sharing a, a warehouse with a friend, and this guy was like, we're always, we always struggling with money and investing money and trying to build the business. And he came to me, and he was like, man, I like the struggle. I like to live in a way that I don't know what's going to happen. I've got I've to do something. I've got to be on my toes. I like to live this way. So how interesting it is. And people are scared to, to live that safe. It actually, is, it's actually fun once you go. It's there. It's different. It's fulfilling. It's yeah, fulfilling. It's fulfilling. When you go through it, it's not comfortable, right? Like you're you're going through it, and you're like, "Fuck the next thing, the next thing." Like yesterday, like I was completely back to back, like barely any time to think between tasks, but shit had to be done, and it had to be solved. It wasn't quote unquote comfortable, but I was fucking in the zone, dude. And I'm like answering to different people. I'm like on the phone sorting this out on the fucking laptop and then appointment saying something here. It, it's not like, oh, I'm having a great time. This is, I'm happy. No, it's just like I'm in the fucking zone getting shit done. That's fulfilling because when I sit down at the end of the day, now I, oh, I've done some stuff. I've done some, I got shit. some shit. And done. guess what? The, the, the sit down at that end of the day is 10 times more satisfying than that you that just. Than if I just sat on my ass the whole day. Boom. It's 10 times. Even if it was five minutes, bro. Even it's five minutes. And in reality, most days it is five fucking minutes. I'll sit down at the last five minutes. Okay, time to relax. And I'll eat food. grateful. And you feel that yeah. gratitude. Dude, I'll eat food. And then I'm like, all right, what next? Sleep, I guess. And then repeat. 
But that's that's when you. Well, you live in a very abundant life at the moment, and that's how the purpose of life is, man. You live this way, happy, going through these struggles, going through these challenges with this smile on your face. It's incredible to see, man. I'm not always smiling. Same, but a lot of time I'm I'm actually fucking angry. <laughs> you look angry, but you just you know? focused. It's focus. It's focus. Because sometimes it's a, I would say aggression as well. Yeah, I know what you mean. People think the same. I got some. I like it though, man. I like it. We do, and yeah. especially girls, they love it because they want to oh, break yeah. that. They want to break that is expression. Uh, I feel like I as, see as why men. that man is so focused. I want to yes. see why. Well, because <laughs> from a woman's point of view, man, like if a man's focused, like he knows what he wants, he gets what he wants. He's probably more of a resourceful man, you know, just from a woman's point of view. Yep. She'll be like, damn, man, he can he that. can make shit happen. He can. I need shit to happen for my kids. So I better for our find family. that fucking man, All right? But um, anger, aggression, aggression. I don't think is a bad thing. I think it can be used no. very, very well. You should know how to use it. Exactly. You you gotta. Con- it's controlled aggression, right? Like I never, emotions. I never tapped into it when I was younger, and ever since I really like obviously stepped away from that. I tap into it so much, man, and I love it. You know? And if you use the anger in release to in the right moments, like training, if you use your anger Ooh, to yeah. train, you're trying to go to a next level. Hey, yeah. tell me how many sessions you've done angry and what's the best yeah. sessions of your life? I love it, bro. I know you love it. I love it. I don't talk to anyone, man. Like the peop- people who like happily talk in the gym, it, I, I question it. I'm like, how? Like my headspace is not friendly when I train. It's not friendly at all. It's and an it's, aggressive. It's kind aggressive. Of. And it's not directed towards anyone. It's just, I'm here to fuck shit up. That's the energy. Yeah. That's it. I, I'm the same. Like when people were like, and it's intimidating, it is. But that's how it's supposed to be. We're here to fucking train, man. We're not here to chat. Chat after. Chat after. You know, if you we actually, sit on the table and no, we do a podcast. Literally. When we man. train, we train. If you, if you spoke to me after the gym, I'm completely different. Yeah, we were trying you know? to create a record, create some content while we're training. We couldn't. It was like, no, nah, today we're going to train and today yeah. we're just going to create content. That's an art, We man. can't mix it. I, I do respect the people who can keep good training whilst recording. Yeah. And it's good for marketing, I guess. Yeah. And it's just, you it's need just someone to film you and you have to literally... Be in the zone. Yeah, yeah not even talk to them. Hey. Uh, and hey. they do their job and you do yours. Yes. Yes. Because <laughs> you respect it. It's like sacred, a sacred sp- space. Dude, it when is, you love man. training. It's a meditation to me. It is. It's a meditation. I, I don't even like training with people. And I get off. Same. Dude, I get offered. Let's train together, bro. Let's do th- and It's I'm, fun and I'm like, sometimes, but most of the time, I, will, oh, I like that. You know that why? Space. You know why, though? Because it's your space, your it's time. A, exactly. And also, I visualize every set before I do it. I see it. I feel it. And like, you don't have anyone to wait. Don't want to exactly. Just right? you and you. Yes. You improving you. For me to visualize it, I need to not be fucking talking. And I need to not feel like I have to talk to you. And music right? has to be pumping on my ears. I, when I Dep- nah, it depends. Well, I mean, I'll play music, but the kind of music depends. Like if it's too pumpy, it's distracting. Yeah. I kind of like slow, heavy beats. You know? I do like some gangster rap, though. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, because I make some noise while I'm training, man. I, I forget about everyone. Forget about everything. That's why you rented a place out. I was getting too many complaints. <laughs> He's like, fuck, I gotta just pay for my own place. And then when I get out of the cave and I go train with in public, I notice that a lot of people are like looking at me because I just don't give a fuck, man. Yeah. We should go train together one day. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not interested. No, dude, like, okay, when we did that park workout. Oh yeah, that was fun. Around. Yeah, that's that was why fuck it was around. fun because it was a fuck around. Was I'm fuck not actually around. training. No, that's that, rest day. That's, that's rest day, dude. Like I'm, I'm cool to do that. Rest days we do. You know, we film do calisthenics. Some, film some content. Like that's fun. But like when I'm actually training, I'm like I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want to train with anyone. I want to be by myself. But when good. when there's people that understand this, we can just we don't even have to talk. It's just like that's true. I had one. You know guy, what I'm saying? Yeah, there was one guy in Sydney. He he really understood it, and we had a good. Don't good talk. Yeah. Just we would, we would we would even we knew our warm ups exactly, so we would like help each other and we just we wouldn't fucking talk. I'd look at him. The I'd, intimacy. Dude, I, <laughs> I I would walk into the gym and I'd see him. We'd just be like, that's it. No words. Started warming up on like the bench, whatever. 
Yeah, no, didn't even need to do that. Uh-huh. It was literally just just looking, do a handshake, nod, and then we'll just you know what to do. Yeah, you just go with the flow. Yeah. It, it was good, man. It was good, but the thing is, when you're self motivated, like I don't need people to. Well, when you have a training partner, they can push you for one more. I'm like, I don't need to fuck push. I need to hold back because I push too hard sometimes and it fucks me. So I need to, I <laughs> seriously, <Sorry>. like <laughs> this morning after I finished training, genuinely, like um, someone was trying to talk to me and I was just like, I'm fucked. I need to sit down. <laughs> give me a, give me a minute. Yeah, liter- literally. So, um, Bro, go into your upbringing a little bit. I'm curious to hear about it said with your dad man there's it's interesting there's a there's a saying there's a study actually behind this before before four years old or six years old you just want your mom and then after that you don't want your mom anymore you just want your dad because dad is fun before you're just a little kid that doesn't want much trouble but after when you're six years old you just want your dad your mom feel actually alone it's actually hard for the parents but if they understand that, and if you're a parent, you might know this. It just want your dad because it's fun. Dad is fun, do crazy things. And yeah, my dad was always a good role model for me. Entrepreneur. He, he was a free man, do the things he wants. So it was very what fun. What business did he have? He has a couple of business, man. Mm. We got a farm. So in the farm, there's a lot of business going on in a farm, you know. This is like a, a big company. And then he started his own company and then he opened another, like a franchise, with one there, another one there. And how can I say the people that look after the plants and the soil? So he's that guy and he created a company, he opened his company and he sell the products for the farmers as well. So I go to your farm, and I see all oh, your plants, your, your soil need this, this and that. And you, I can sell it for you. I can provide everything for you. And everything, man. When you're an entrepreneur, you just do everything. You just hustle. Just like, uh, yeah, we got cows, we got coffee, we got the companies going on. Uh, so we got some tractors, we got trucks. And then it just entrepreneur, man. And so it was very good for me to understand that. So I was a boss since a young age. Learn how to f- be actually the son of the boss, being the boss. But when I came to Australia, things was different because I felt, I saw the, the, another, the other side of the coin, being the worker. So I went through that. And I was like, wow. So this is the mindset. Now I understand the mindset of the boss and the mindset of the workers. I went there. And I became a worker here, bottom of the ladder, and I start to see everything, and then I my mindset changed it. I went to the bottom, to the mind, the mindset of the average people, and that was tough, man. That was actually it made me feel really depressed. And then I switched it again. I was like, I'm the boss. I'm the boss. Literally, I start to work on the paper. I am the boss. And then I became the boss again. I start to walk with the boss of this company that I was working for. And I became the boss again, and I start to step away from the workers, from everyone else, because they were talking shit about the boss. That's what most people do, talk shit about your boss. And if you do the opposite, if you actually be on the side of your boss, be on the side of your boss and help him and bring solution for the business, you're going to become the boss. Even if I wasn't, I used to walk in this company like I was the boss. Because <laughs> you, you are if you think you are. I was talking to Julio today, a multimillionaire, and he was like, I was like, your son is very good looking man, eh? and he was like, but he doesn't know, so he, he's not. He doesn't feel like he's a very a good looking man, so he's not, and it's true. Mm. Like he, doesn't, he doesn't act like it. Yeah, he li- it's like you. You know who you are. You act like you are, and this, this energy is like, as soon as I saw you, I was like, oh, who's this guy, man? He's the boss. He's the big boss. As soon as I saw you at the coffee shop, I was like, oh, this guy, man. He's, he's on a mission. Mm. He's like, how, can I, how, how do you say you're dieting? No, he said another, he used another word. Locked in. Locked in, focus. 
just getting shit done in the zone. You're in the zone and then it's very nice to see people doing it like that. And this is attractive for me. Other people will judge me like, oh, this guy is arrogant. Look at the way he walks. But it's just self-confidence, man. So true, man. It's so true. People think it's arrogance, but it's self-confidence. They, they, may, they mistake it. Yeah. They mistake it. That's actually wild to me. Man. The, the right people will notice. The, the right people, the right will, people notice. will notice. And that's why I don't care because wh- yeah. my intent's always been good. It's you attract the right people. Dude, I, I never had any of it, bro. I know the other side. You know it. That's the most powerful shit, bro. Like, when you know the other side, I'm getting fucking tingles right now, man. Because it's like, when people see me now and they're like, oh, he's confident, he's arrogant. Have you, did you know my fucking upbringing? Mm. I never had fucking shit. I never had that before. I never had that shit. Wow. You know? I respect that. I never fucking had that shit. Like, my passion is so fucking strong. My, My appreciation... Like, I could probably practice gratitude a bit more, but I'm just so fucking, like you said, locked in. I'm just thinking about the next thing because I'd never had it. Like, I never fucking had it. That's why I have so much insatiable drive. It's That's why you're so passionate bro. about it. It's insatiable, man. I had so much... I, I, I get it. I never went through... You know, there's people who've had shit harder than me, mm. right? But when you're talking about the character development, like, I, I was so weak. I was so fucking weak, man. I, I victim, re- being a victim. I was a victim. I used to fucking fantasize about bad shit happening to me so people would pay attention to me. I would daydream about that frequently. Thinking, like, wanting people to be like, oh, Will, Will. Like, well, that's what's pathetic, happening? Can dude. I help you? That's fucked. Feeling like, sorry about yourself. No, that's, exactly. And that's fucked. I only that's actually, fucked, dude, I noticed that. Like, that, that I only realized that I used to do it this year. Because I, I, I had the thought, I'm like, I actually used to think about that shit. Is that, um, what's that yellow? That's a table. <laughs> Never mind. Dude, I used, to, <laughs> I used to literally daydream about that shit. And that's like the most fucked up way of thinking. Like, I, I had victim mentality. I felt sorry for myself. Um, no, no self-esteem. Ashamed of who I was. Couldn't handle attention. I never felt deserving of anything. I had to build myself up in every fucking way. Every fucking way, man. Like, everything that I did was just straight, like, work ethic. All right? It it was, like, from the ground up, like, genuinely. I I did, I did have, you know, I had a place to live. I did have those essentials, those bare essentials. But there's a lot of shit that I had to fucking develop. And I think as a... A lot of men have to d- develop that shit. You know, a lot of us men have to go through that. And I, I, a lot of men listening to this as well probably still feel that way. And that's what I'm fucking passionate about, which is like, brother, you don't have to fucking stay there. The only person who's making you stay there is yourself and your limiting belief, right? I, I lacked the self-belief, but when I started working on, on myself... My belief started to increase. And when I started to get around people who saw the fucking pain and hunger that I had, they started to instill belief in me, right? And guess what? My reality started changing because my belief in myself started changing. Therefore, my actions started changing. When my actions started changing, people perceived me different and my reality shifted. And that's when my identity completely shifted. You have to fucking let go of that old identity that you're running by. You can choose. Every moment is a new fucking moment, right? It's a new fucking moment. Your perception of yourself isn't real. Identity is a tool. It's just a fucking tool. It's the ego. It's not, you can use it for good or bad. It's totally up to you. I'll use it for fucking good. You know what I'm saying? My previous, previous identity was everything that I just said. And it, it got me that life. My current one, totally different. And it's gotten me this one. And I'm going to continue to find ways to debunk my current identity so I can move to the next fucking level. That's how it works. Oh, uh, there's a video I was I was watching. It was the best video I've ever seen. And then, you know that Navy SEAL Jacko? Yep, Jacko Willings. Yeah, I think in, I think I sent you this video. The guy came to him and he was like, "Boss, we got some major problems going on. We got some issues." And he looked to them and he's like, "Good." Yeah. And then this guy came to him again. I was like. I know what you're going to say. I'm not going to say anything. I know what you're going to say. You always say good. And he was like, hell yeah. You didn't get promoted? Good. More time to work on yourself. 
But you didn't get the girl you want. Good. Go work on yourself. Go to the gym. So yeah, problems makes you stronger. Pro problems, problems. Like, you need them. You need them. Responsibilities. Dude, everything, everything that happens in my life. The thing is, you never know the place that that event has in your life. It could feel like the worst fucking thing that has ever happened to you at that point in time, but it could have been the best thing that happened to you. You will never know that, though. You will never know. So the way that I look at it is that everything is still an opportunity to then reframe that event into something positive, right? There were moments in my car it was a very emotional time for me at the time family shit you know i've been in my car basically i was kicked out of my home <laughs> in sydney yeah i was kicked out from your family home from my family yeah like i, I lived with my family until fuck knows probably you got bit, kicked out a bit too long um i got kicked out you, know, I, you, you went to, it's to a, live it, in your car look yeah, I got kicked out because I spoke to my dad. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to be completely fucking sure. You, you, cr you confront your dad. You went for I, a confront. I just spoke to him because most of my upbringing. You never spoke. I, I, I had contact with him, but the way that it was with my family was that there was a lot of drama between my mom and my dad. So basically, I'm some fucking kid who's like, I want to connect with my dad I have a big pain point around this but then I have my mum's side which is you can't you can't talk to him and even if they said that you couldn't there's like emotional fucking ties of if you talk to him you have to say this 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 because he did this this so you went there and no no like and this is the thing I didn't want to say that shit because I didn't fucking resonate with it you right. know what I'm saying there's a lot of emotional ties so you felt fucking stuck right you say one one wrong thing you're fucked and that's what happened so there was one day i dropped my sister off to my dad and i was just sitting there and at this point man it's been years since i spoke to him and i'm like fuck man like he's right there you know and man like a son knowing your dad's right fucking there like and you haven't spoken to him i get fucking emotional talking about this shit like that that fucking hurts you know, like a lot of my fucking life, I just wanted a connection with my dad. And at that point, I was like, I'm going to go talk to him. So I went out and talked to him. And he was like, holy fuck. Like he always wanted to talk to me, you know. But to be honest, he never took initiative. He never like made it happen to come speak with me. And I was disappointed about that, you know. He would, he would have his reasons, this, that. But it's like, dude, you're a fucking man. Like, if you want something, you make it happen. All right? This goes back to the whole boss thing. And anyways, I fucking made it happen because no one else was. None of the parents being fucking responsible, taking fucking initiative. I'm like, well, I'm just going to have to fucking step God. up. I had to step up, bro. Like, you don't understand, like, the amount of fucking stepping up I have to do for my family. Because no, everyone's too fucking stubborn to talk to Victim. each other. They're too stubborn. It's not even that, bro. It's stubbornness. Like they, they don't want to admit that they were fucking wrong. Or that they said this and they said that. And they refuse. Bick bickering, man. And I'm just like, look, man. Like, I have one fucking life. So you went there and I was like, let's I went chat. There, I spoke to him. I got a fucking ring from someone I expected. I held the phone away like this. Fucking screaming, screaming, screaming. Literally, I sound like a fucking... Anyways. <laughs> Wasn't allowed back home. Or, like, kept my shit. Like, wasn't allowed in the house. Um, and, yeah. Where did you go? I moved in with my dad. You moved in? That fucking night. To I'm live with him? Never fucking speaking to him for years. I moved in with him. That oh, was... Your mom kicked you out. I spoke to him. And then you went there to stay with your dad and that was, that was good? Dude, what happened? Was, yeah, after? man. Like, he took, he was ready for it, man. Like, that was... Nice. Dude, he, he was like, holy fuck. Like, that was his moment. And I... How old were you? Dude, I was, I was older, bro. I was like 20. 
Something How old like are that. you now? 26. Yeah, I, 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 I stay with my family probably longer than I needed to. Um, and that that's goes back to the same thing of like, I think I, I was comfortable, man. I was mm-hmm. comfortable. I was, I was developing myself, but yeah, I was they, comfortable. There's 30, o- 30 year old boys with their, yeah. their like You dead. gotta fucking leave your hometown, man. You gotta leave your hometown. But man, like, going back to my point, there was a time, it was around that event. And I was just in my car, and like, I don't know, at that time, man, like, your mom fucking disowns you. <laughs> your step, your, your, your fucking stepdad as well. It's actually very and cool. There's a lot of emotional ma- manipulation at play that I haven't spoken about during the whole thing. Um, a lot of bullshit. And it was like, I just remember at one point, I, I just felt pretty fucking low. And I was like, you know what? Give me more. Like, I remember I was in the car. I was just speaking I like to myself. It. I was like, give me fucking more. And I was like, I'll show you what I can do. I said that shit just... I was just talking to myself, man. But I was just so like... Dude, like, you can do whatever the fuck you want to me. And I'll show you I bounce back stronger every fucking time. You know? Like, I've always had utmost confidence. That I'll, I'll just fucking work my way up. Like, that's all I knew, you know, at that point. Because everything... I had to work for everything that I had, you know? So, that that was... Yeah, man. Like, that was just one of those things that... No matter what happens, you can reframe it. And I'm, I'm a fucking expert at reframing because of my upbringing and the amount of emotional fucking instability that I had to go through. Not just that one thing, but other shit and just having to live with it every fucking day. I, I love my family, all of them. I'm very, um, you know, like I, I love them all. But at the same time, it taught me how to be very emotionally in control. Very. Otherwise, like, you would go fucking crazy. <laughs> you will go fucking crazy. And um, I, so I became a fucking expert at reframing shit, man. So that's why my mindset's so strong. It's so strong, bro. Um, it was the only way to mentally stay stable. <laughs> yeah. And I lived with, then I moved in with my dad. And that's when I truly thing is man my dad's not really like a strong male figure he's very comfortable just you work you know, for someone else yeah he's just got the job and i've got like little stepbrothers little asian stepbrothers <laughs> and you uh, know that there's a study that dads that stay away from their from the from the family work away like let's say i work in the mines and then i come yeah. home they have less effect in their kids' upbringing than the dads that go work nine to five, come home, and start complaining about his life. Those kids that have the, their parents complain about his job and his life, the kids has more... It's more... How can I say? They got, get bullied in school. They build low self-confidence. If... if if I can say it this way, how can I say it's better? But did you understand? Yeah, yeah, self-esteem. Yeah, the dads that work nine to five come home and complain about their lives affect on their kids way more than the their, the dads that the parents just stay away. And well, that's the thing, right? Like, if your dad doesn't match up to the role model you want, you have to look elsewhere. And, and <laughs> you no, gotta leave. You then, yeah, that's what I did. But the thing is, right? He, he just gave me such an open space and I was like so grateful for that. I get it. Like I didn't have a lot of communication with him. But he at that point, man, he missed out on my upbringing. He, he missed out on like a lot of important years, right? So he, he felt so indebted and uh, he gave me all the space that I wanted. And how's he got a room ready for me that night. It's good. Right now. It's good, good bro. It's good. Like we're, we're fucking good. He's chill. Like he, he, just, wants, he just wants the best, you know? Like, he, he already feels bad enough. He feels like he's missed out. And to be fair, he has. You know? Like, he, he saw me when I already was fucking grown. So... Felt it. Yeah, man. Like, that, that fucking hurt for him, too. The thing is, he just never took the initiative. And that's unfortunate. But at the same time, I've learned to be very forgiving because you don't know the upbringing that even they had. Right? Like, the... If I actually ask, when I ask about him and his parents, it's like, well, 
his parents didn't even have fucking parents to live with. Their parents passed away at a very young age, so they didn't even know how to fucking parent him. So I'm like, well, it makes fucking sense then. So how can I take a personal? How can I hold a grudge on him? I can't, man. Like, he didn't even have good role models growing up. Oh, that's you very know? good, man. And you th- honor them. You honor it, man. And like, it, it's just empathizing. It's like, look, you didn't know mm. any better. You know, I, I get it. Mercy. Self control, responsibility. I'm all about it. But there's just a certain point, man. If they're 50 and 60, they're in their ways, man, most of the time. Just, just fucking love them. And if you can't be around them, love them from afar. You like know? We What's the alternative? Most people blame them. Don't blame your parents. Nah, man. Just My love parents made me who them. I am. Good and bad. Good and bad. They did their best with what they have, what they had back then. So honor them and don't blame them. Yeah. It's easy to blame the environment. It's easy to blame your parents, blame your coach. Take accountability and just become a better version. Go seek other people. Go change your environment. Turn the blame into a blessing, man. Yeah. Because blame you. But, dude, all the things that you're, you're blaming for, that, that frustration you're feeling is leverage. It's emotional leverage to propel the other way. So turn the blame into a blessing. Turn the pain into your power. That's the thing. Reframe the fuck Reframe. out of it, dude. Because now you have a hunger, you have a, an anger, an aggression that you can use completely for the other way. Compared to the motherfucker, man, I know people who just picture perfect family, their whole upbringing, no drive, nothing. You could destroy them in whatever goal. They've got no fucking ambition. It was too easy. Too easy. I, I, I call it, I channel, channelize that energy to the right way you want it, to the right directions. You say reframe, I like using cha- channelize it. Channel. Channel. Just channel. Just channel. <laughs> yeah, just channel it. Channel it. <laughs> channel, not channelize. Channel it. Just channel it. Just channel it. Just channel it. And use it for yeah. the... Yeah. Every, everything, man. Everything. At the end of the day, this, the, this is how I live my life now, right? I have the present moment. That's it. What's the next best thing to do? That's it. What's the next best thing to do according to the current knowledge that I have right now? Right? Because that means I'm going to be taking advantage of everything at every single point in time. You know what I'm saying? And if I can just live my life that way and adjust as I go, shit's fucking good. So if, if things happen to you that aren't so good or they perceived as bad, well, what's the next best thing to do right now? And if you realize down the line that was a mistake, you forgive yourself. Why? Because according to the knowledge you had at that point in time, it was what you thought was the best thing. You just didn't know better. Now you learn. So now what do you do? The next best thing. Live your life like this, man. You're going to have a good fucking life. You know? You're going to have a good Look around, life. see what you have. And use whatever you got right now to build that life that you want. Use the weekends. Oh, I don't have time. I work during the week. Use your weekends to build the life you want rather than escape. Rather than use your weekend to escape from the reality you have. Yeah, man. Use the weekends, the time off to build that life for a better tomorrow. Mm. <laughs> What we do, we use the weekend to escape the reality. Because your re- reality is shit. You can't wait to be Friday. I was actually, that was going to be one of my content thing, not my next video. Try get your weekend and divide your whole weekend during the week so you have fun every day a little bit. So every day is the best day of your life. Not living the whole week waiting for Friday to become interesting, to become fun. What do you feel we get the weekend? How many hours we got in the weekend? How many is three days? It's two days. Two days. 48 hours. 48 hours. If you divide that for... Yeah, but they're not going to be awake the whole time, right? Huh? They won't be awake. Say 16 hours, 32 hours. 32 hours hours. divide per seven. It's four hours. If you... You just got to have fun four hours every day. But make sure you have fun. You do whatever you want. Time for fun. You just need four and a half hours every day for fun. And you have the whole weekend... And so every if day you came to me and you're like four and a half, I'm like, that's a lot though. Like I wouldn't do that in a work day. See, you know what I'm saying? See, in a work day, what is a work day and what's not? Work but the day? thing is like, I, I, I have positive associations with work. 
We just program, <laughs> bro. We program. No, well, work's not a bad thing, though. Like, why do people think work's a bad thing? Yeah, right? we love working, right? The, the way I look at it is that there's certain values that I live my life by. As long as those are being fulfilled, I'm <laughs> fucking happy. It's not about the days. Yeah. Like, this is the blessing of running your own business, right? You kind of dictate your hours to a degree, right? You work more than you would any nine to five, but you can dictate some things and move shit around and you can do it. Like, that's, that's why I fucking started it. You know, like I, I understood that and I planned for it, right? But I like to make sure that everything in my life can fulfill those buckets, right? Emotional buckets, um, you know, the work bucket, health. Like you got to know the things that truly mean shit to you. You know what I'm saying? Like I know that I've got, you know, some sort of demand for time with feminine energy. Now, it doesn't always have to be sexual feminine energy. That's great too. Right now, if you don't have the option of the sexual feminine energy to tap into, dude, I would just ring my fucking sister just to talk to her. I'll be driving, ring her up. Hey, what's going on? You know, talk to my sister for a bit. You know, like, and at the same time, I'm doing two things at once. Right, I'm I'm fulfilling that side of me that wants that energy, and then I'm also keeping a relationship with my family going. Right, so you got to be smart about it. I fit everything into my to maybe if it's not every day there are some days some shit has to fucking wait sure but over a long time horizon and when you average it all out it's all relatively balanced to my way of balance that makes me feel good but you've got to have a very clear understanding of what your values are first to even start thinking like that and then once you know you just design your life you literally design your life how can i make sure i tick those boxes through my week and how can i get the best of both worlds and start combining shit so every day just becomes a good fucking day. That's how I had to change my, my program. Because we are programmed to live a week like it's oh, the weekend. I don't even know, know what day it is sometimes, bro. That's it. It's like tomorrow is the best day of my life and the next day is going it just It's the best day of my life until it ends. And then tomorrow is going to be even better. But that's why when you focus more on the present moment and flow state, mm. if you at every point in time you're just like, all right, how can I get myself to be in the present moment how? right now and get into a flow state? Yep. Right? What do you need to do to be in flow state? There, there's so many ways you can do it, right? Breath work's a great way. Just getting into your body is a great way. Working out, breath work, okay? Literally, I could, like, right now, just... <sighs> I could pump myself up like that just for, like, five minutes. Deep fucking breaths. Your whole body's tingling at that point. Like, you're, you're fucking tingling. You, you have no awareness of anything else. You're, you're, <laughs> so simple, dude, eh? It's so fucking simple. Like, I used to be skeptical about that shit, the breath work, because I would look at certain people who would uh, preach about it, and I just wouldn't like them. So I attached the two. <laughs> I'm like, I just don't like that person, and I attached breath work to them. But I've, I actually had some great experiences recently with breath work, really Same. fucking great experiences. And um, it's so simple, and it's so quick, man. You can do... You know, there was a morning I woke up, I felt like shit, and I was just negative the whole time. I was like, this is fucked. Like, I don't want to go about my day like this. So I was like, all right, what am I going to do? Game plan. Five, like 12 minute breath work, put the audio on. I did that. That pumped my state up enough to, to like propel myself into the fucking cold shower. Then I quickly you do, changed. You do that every day? Yeah. Um, and then every I, single day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then I quickly changed, and I immediately drove myself to a location to where i know i'm typically productive there because there's nothing else to do but work so i strategically used things to put myself then in the environment where the rest took care of itself all right breath work i i pumped my state through that you can do it through exercise literally go for a sprint do some burpees usually being physical is a great way to do it man it's Very a great, great way. way to set your day up. you know just physicality exercise so on and so forth some people love to dance you know, I don't do that one as much. I, I just more so fucking, if I'm like getting work done, I just get hyped up. I just fucking, I'm, I'm yelling. I'm like, woo, like fucking just hyping myself up, you know, just flow state. Yeah. And that flow state is when you just lose perception of time. Like, uh, like right now. Yeah. Yeah. Like I could talk on this for fucking ages, man. And you'll be like checking your phone like you have been every now and then and getting out of flow state. But I'm here like fucking... You know, because it's, I don't know, you enjoy it. When you enjoy it, you can get to that space. But there's, there's tools you can use to, to, to then get, get to, to that, that space. Yeah. 
And then when you get to that space, man, just fucking embrace it. And I love, there's nothing actually more than I love than caffeinating with nootropics and then working in that state. Dude, like... Nootropics, which ones? Lion's Mane. Just that uh, one. The extract? No, I use... Um, powder? It's a powder, yeah. A thick, vi- a thick glass? Is that from a thick glass thing? Oh, that's one oh. of them, Evolution Botanicals. Pretty good. Eh? It tastes very, very nice. Eh? Not really. Not really. But I don't. I, I just had one shot it. And but to get to that flow state, you actually gotta have fun in life. Because if you're always grumpy and you like, you know, what I'm saying. I don't think flow state is just fun. No, it's not fun. I mean, you gotta actually enjoy life. But it's like, what's the definition of that? You know. Because when your heart is peaceful. You can enjoy the present moment. If you're anxious, you can't. And if your heart is peaceful, because you're actually enjoying life, you're having fun. Like right now, we're having fun, but doesn't mean it's we laugh, you know, we doing stuff. Yeah, like that. yeah. It's, I think it's just like when a lot of people hear enjoy and fun, and at least my perception of those words is like it has to be like we have to be like. So that's ah, a preconceived have, notion, yeah. right? It's a pre- nah. preconceived notion on my end. Um, it, it just feels like you're like, all right, I'm having fun now. I'm like, it's just being present, bro. Just being present. Simple as that. Simple as that. Whether you're laughing, whether you're focused, whether you're just whatever, just be present in the moment. You know? And I remember you said about going to coffee shops and stuff, getting out there. It's so, so, so good, man, because... When I'm out there, when I'm here, I don't have insights, good ideas. But mm. when I go out... Do you remember when I said know your values and then know how to tick the boxes at the same time? That's, that's my way of doing it sometimes. By the way, sometimes I don't talk to fucking anyone. I'm like, I'm in a place like this. You don't have to. But then there's other times, man. I'm like, I want to go to the cafe because when I'm ready to... I know I'm going to run into people, right? I know I'm going to run into people. And that's fulfilling to me. It's ticking my social bucket. All right? Networking. Boom. Yeah, dude. Literally. Like, you know how many people I meet? Just especially, like, in the business space. Especially here, where we're at. There's a lot of them. And with... Look at this place. Yeah. And with Craig's crew as well. They all go in and out of, the, like, that coffee place. And so, dude. Where is he? Craig. Right now? Well, he's in Bowie. Yeah? He lives around here? Yeah, in Bowie. I walk away. <laughs> Literally. Do you live around here as well? No. 30 minutes. I drive, dude. Because I know, like, once I'm in a good location, I'm good. Even if I got to drive. Because if I do... Do you I go to different this, gyms as well? No. That's one thing. It's got to be the fucking same. <laughs> dude, I hate going to different gyms. I love it. Dude, I, it's, I'm so routined with training. Like, training is that, like, same shit... Every fucking time. But when I'm changing gyms, the equipment's different. I actually like it. It's too much variation. I'm very fucking nitpicky with my lifts. Do you know Grant Cardone? Yeah. <laughs> he, he had that... Is that a episode or that documentary that he went, oh, he went on TV the show, street, the TV yeah, show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said, like, I've got to go to a, a gym because there's people in the gym. Yeah. That actually made me... It's like, oh, it might actually go into the gym just to train, but you can actually go to the gym and... Yeah, if you want to... I think the higher... Co- even in the early mornings, because I, I notice every now and then if I go really early, there's like people you know they're doing well because they get up early. And 4 a.m. The 4 a.m. club. 4 5. 4 or 5 a.m. club. Yeah, those people, like, they people, really want to go. Like one, there's one fucking stud in there and you're like, he's... He's successful. Yeah. You know, like you look at him, he's got the hoodie on, you know he's jacked his yeah. fuck underneath. He's got a look in his eye, man. You can look in someone's eye and just be like, that, you can that's tell. a motherfucker. You can tell. You know, like he, guy's he's, hungry. he's done some shit, mm. you know? Yeah. But uh, gym, gym, yeah. Like, because it's a healthy habit, right? So if you really want to meet good quality people, just do what good quality people do. Simple as that. And go to the places. Like Burley here, it brings some good quality people. It's a, there's a good energy about this place. Yeah, that's why I come, because I'm just like, it's a good energy. If 
You go like Surfers Paradise. Different. Sh- shitty. Shitty energy, bro. Yeah, I went there today and I was t- telling one of my friends. Can you tell the, the difference of the energy? It's so different, bro. The people. Like, sure, there's, you'll find some people, but you got to go to specific places. So around. grateful to be around here. Yeah. I was thinking of moving here, maybe. I've lived here before, but we'll see. I'm not really... I'm just going with the flow right now. How long have you been on the Gold Coast for? Well, actually, when I first moved up, it was two months. Then with my friend, we moved to Brisbane for six months. And then I came back. And uh, it's been maybe two years. Two years? Yeah. How's your your diet at the moment? Pretty regimented. What do you eat? I eat the same shit, man. Every day? What do you eat? Most days, but like, I'm not afraid to eat out. Like, today I had two fucking coconut bounty bars not like the in the snack one like the ones at the cafes that's super high calorie but it's like with dark, coffee. It's dark chocolate and coconut flakes with coffee i didn't know nah, i had a lot of pre-workout this morning yeah I, eat it. I was fucking buzzing and uh but yeah so what what, what is your diet if um you eat the same shit every day it might be i track my calories i track my calories yeah how many calories a day uh varies so on a rest day i'll have uh Approximately 24, but I'm very in tune with my body. If I know it needs more or less, I'll do it. And on training days, I'll eat 3,400 or so. So Which it's very is? high, low, high, low. Um, That's very good. Because my digestion is simply better on training days. I'm a lot hungrier. So I utilize the food way better. And then when, when I'm just, when it's just a, a day off and I'm working, you don't need it. I'm, I'm fucking not as hungry. sitting down, dude. Like, I'm not really that active. I was actually talking to a friend today, like, just, you know, one of fitness guys. And he was like, yeah, bro, I barely got any steps done. And I thought of you <laughs> because I only do like two to 3,000 steps on average a day. Like, if I actually pull my phone out and you see how many steps I do, it's fucking nothing, dude. I just lift weights and then I manipulate my diet. I, I don't do any cardio. Body fat's really I, I'm low. lean, bro. And what do you eat, bro? You don't want to tell the secret. <laughs> You're hiding. Fuck. No, it's, so it'll depend on the day as well, right? So pre-workout meal is always just like oats mixed with protein powder. I'll melt dark chocolate on it uh, because it's good for pumps. Bowl? Yeah, okay. yeah. 130 grams of oats, 20G protein mix. Um, then 40 to 50 grams of dark chocolate, I melt on it. 30 grams of honey and That's then a it? banana. That's pretty and big, a banana? bro. That's like... A thousand calories. Boom, that's your pre-workout. That's my pre-workout meal, like first thing in the morning. One hour before training? Uh, yeah, 60 to 90 minutes. You get some work done, what do you do before? You usually digest, shower, um, and then it's either... Organizing a, a, stuff. a fuck around read. I'm not even reading. Like, Or I'll yeah answer some WhatsApp messages, whether it's clients or whatever. But it's like, I, I don't really do much. I just let it digest, I change, and then by the time I drive to the gym like, all, and warm up, all that time's kind of been already happened. So that's, that's what I do, and that's on post, training days. And then post-workout meal, what do you do? Um, it's usually the last night's dinner, which is typically chicken, potatoes, chicken breast, and avocado. Lean? No, I get, um, so there's a Lilydale brand. It's free-range chicken, and it's seasoned. So um, it's breast, but it's got the skin. Tastes fucking good, man, and I don't have to do shit. I just open it put in the pan, cut in four and scissors, and it just cooks. So it's tasty, quick, 160 calories per 100 grams, so it's not that bad. So I, I have And that rice? No, nah, potatoes, potatoes, man. Rice, I, I don't like. As I, I like it, but How from many like- grams of potato? I don't feel satisfied from rice. And the calories are higher than the satisfaction ratio. Potatoes, though, I feel way more satisfied. White potatoes? And the calories are la- lower. Spud light. What's that? They're lower calories. They're oh, like even lower calories. Is that Aussie thing, eh? Yes. Spud light. Um, that's typically what I have. 200 and then some, grams? 200 grams of each? Uh, it depends, man. It yeah. really depends on how hungry I am. Oh, yeah? Sometimes, sometimes I'll no have a pro, meal no and then protein, I'll go and make a second one. No protein shake after workout? Or you stretch a Dude, solid meal? Dude, I put protein meal. in my, my oats and yogurt. And then just I stretch a solid meal? I have 250 to 300 grams of protein a day. Not because I need to, because I just like it. Okay. And then... Post workout meal, solid meal, potatoes, yeah, chicken, and fucking, then it's it's like an avocado and then yep. sauce. Then okay, sauce, sauce, barbecue sauce, just 
Hot fucking sauce, Aussie, mate. Yeah, yeah, fucking let's go, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I fucking lather it. Like, I, I go pretty hard on the fucking... On the fucking barbecue yeah, sauce, yeah, the mate. barbecue sauce, mate. So after the fucking lathering of the barbecue sauce, mate... <laughs> No, dude, tomato sauce is way more fucking Australian than barbecue, though. But barbecue is way better, dude, right? Yeah, way better, dude. But, like, tomato barbecue sauce, team. dude, chips and tomato sauce is, like, the fucking... That's the that's Australian the way, dude. Thing. Yeah, yeah, but I won't lie, it's fucking nice. But no wonder why a lot of Australians are fat. Like, that's straight fucking oil and carbs. You know what I'm saying? Sodium. Dude, it's fucked. So chips, do not eat that shit if you want to lose weight. You're just going to get fucking fat. Yeah, don't eat the chips. We're going to the third meal. Third, uh, all right, third, third meal. So this is a training day because it's different on the rest day. Um, now, the thing is, right, because I count calories, I don't fully bound myself to like a rigid this time, this time, but I do have tendencies, right? So I'll have that meal, but then what I'll tend to do... I'll Two get, hours after? I'll get hungry like an hour later. Metabolism I'm, I'm is just, just like fucking this. firing, dude. Because like when you train hard, You're dude, a firing machine to burn calories. Yeah. So what will happen is I'll then shower and I'll work for a bit, and literally I'm like, fuck, man, like I want to eat again. So that's when I have the the protein yogurt. I'll do that. Um, what is a protein yogurt? So it's Explain just yogurt, it low fat yogurt mixed with protein powder. Yeah. So lactose free or no? Um, oh, I don't know. It's like 05 percent fat. It's like skim with protein powder, that's it. There's no, no, fruits, no, berries. No, I add shit, man. I'm, I make it fucking. I nice. want to see. I want to know everything, Dude, I, I, man. I, I Give me all the details, oh, brother. Fuck. I make it nice though. Like, I I've had this literally for years. So the yogurt with protein powder. Okay, berries. 150 grams of, there of we go. like low fat fucking yogurt, the Chobani one, the lowest fat one. Protein powder. I'll do 30 grams, and I'll mix it, and it'll be thick, right? <laughs> Thick 150 grams of frozen blueberries On it Then I'll put a block of dark chocolate again so dude, bit at, of honey. dude at this point I've had Six squares Like basically a whole block of dark chocolate It's one the, block of the, one dude, day right In the first half of the fucking day And I do this like four days a week You love that dark chocolate dude, right I'm a, 70%? I eat that shit uh, Sometimes 85 or 78 usually yeah. See I'm guys, a, the secret is the dark chocolate. I'm not afraid of the 70 though. You know, I, I don't go lower than 70 ever. Right. But I, I love dark chocolate, man. And it's then one hour good. after you're hungry again. I'm not done yet. I'm not, yet. I'm not done yet. Right, I'll put sorry, the cho sorry. dark chocolate. Um, if I'm really fucking hungry, I'll put a little bit of honey. But otherwise I have sugar-free maple syrup that I'll put on it. And that'll be my next thing. And then I'll sip on kombuchas usually um, the throughout day. the day. If I don't have that, water, keep it simple. And now from this point... <laughs> I'll, I won't eat until dinner because I, I actually like, like for productivity, I don't like to eat too much, actually. I like to go a long time without. So I just hammer calories around my training because my body's so fucking, like if I actually don't, I'll get distracted because I'm so hungry. I actually just get frustrated. I, I notice I'm less productive. So I need to eat. I need to eat after training like proper, you know? And then I'll go long. Same, otherwise I get a little bit anxious. Yeah, I, dude, I'm just like fucking, I, like, need, I need to fucking eat. Where's the food? Where's yeah. the fuel? Yeah, dude, because i so depleted, right? But then I'll go all the way until dinner. I just won't eat for hours, man. Because I'm good. Like, I'm satisfied from the food. I'm not, I don't feel slow because I'm and just fucking running And then it's the same thing it. as yeah. post-workout. And Chicken, then, potatoes. yeah, exactly. And then I repeat that meal again, basically. And see, the only how, see how simple it is to. Yeah, and it's quick. Tastes good to me. I fucking like it. Simple, basic Dude, shit. Simple, quick, tastes good. And the quantity, I'm a quantity guy. That's why I choose ingredients that are naturally low in calories. It's really easy to keep your weight off that way. Hard to gain weight if you choose these kind of foods that are naturally um, not so calorically dense. Because you can eat a lot of quantity. And I love quantity. You love the quantity. Yeah, like so that's why, I have, that's why I have potatoes, right? Chicken, avocado. And um, yeah, I might change the chicken to kangaroo patties. Yeah, we eat fucking kangaroo in Australia. That's right. And it's lean. Lean as. Lean fucking protein, dude. It's lean. It is. Lean. And uh, I'll swap it in with that every now and then, especially on rest days, because rest days I'm burning less, so I'm eating less calories. I would usually actually have the kangaroo on, on the rest on days. On rest days? Uh, and by the way. What about from, the red meat? Dude, bro? I would go and hunt the kangaroo. I'd just one-on-one -on -one fight him. Oh, on uh, cardio. As yeah, no, cardio. no. So, like, I'll go to the – I'll just go, like, next door to the open <laughs> – Open yard, I'll see a kangaroo and I'm like, and I'm going to fight, kill and eat him. 
And that's what we do. We one on one box a little bit, hit him with the left, right, good night, and then um, cook him for dinner and hit my protein that way. That's why my protein count so high, bro. That's <laughs> your Dude, cardio. have you seen kangaroos, man? They're jacked. They jacked. They're fucking jacked. Man. But they eat, they eat grass. So strange, dude. That's Why are the gorillas so jacked and they, they eat They gotta green. be taking steroids. They have to be. Bananas, man. Bananas is the secret. Dude, gorillas the, are The fun. gorillas. Are, whoa, whoa, explain that. Dude. You're and they, they have a mean looking face, too. Like, that's actually like... Dude. That animal is incredible. They're a scary fucking yeah. animal, eh? Like and a they, proper ape. And they vegans, man. <laughs> <laughs> they are. That's fucked, man. That's like... Gorilla that's vegans, genetics, are, dude. How the fuck did we get so like? Oh, but I'm gonna tell you something. As soon as I eat us. red meat, I feel way more stronger. Mm. And Dude, dance, was, my muscles feel dense. When I was in Bali, bro, steak for breakfast, steak lunch for breakfast. and dinner, three times a day. Um, Dude, I I, did, I barely ate carbs though, because like when I travel, um, I like to just minimize calorie, like because I don't know how many I'm taking. Tell in, you're you doing know? that. From your pictures. Yeah, it was just was steak, like, this guy dude, steak and avo, steak and avo, steak. And I just loved it. I just wanted it all the time. Like, I was like, damn, I just I looking forward steak. to my next steak. And now I go to the dinner. What do you want? Steak. steak. Yeah, I'm like, just steak. want steak. Yeah. I want chips. I want no, bring the, bring the I salad. Want protein. I want protein. I, I don't like feeling soft. When I eat like mostly protein, minimal carbs, I feel like tight. I feel tight. Tight. Tight, yeah. And because it's hot in Especially Bali. Especially the red meat too. Oh, it's Because you're always pumped. You're always pumped in Bali. Because it's yeah, humid. Because your muscles, you're veiny. And then you're tight because you're not having carbs. And then I would only have carbs mostly around my workouts before and after. So they're being utilized well. It's a strategy, man. And it was so hard. I lost weight, man. Like I was losing weight. What about bulking, man? Um, I, was, I met a guy today. He's a natural bodybuilder. And he was chubby, man. And I was like... What about being chubby and going through this phase and respect this phase as a bodybuilder or as a person that you want to build mass and you don't want to get chubby? Thing is, right, I, I don't, want, I, I don't want to be a bodybuilder. You know, I want to, I want to get. You big. are a bodybuilder. I'm not just saying a, a professional. Okay, you, you're building your body. You're a bodybuilder. Look, I think there's there's time and place, you know. And look, they are maximizing the gains. There's definitely like a point that you don't want to go past, though. So, no, right? yeah, in your point of view, what what is the limit of a bulking, or you don't apply this to your clients? Or always lean there's, slowly. There's a rule of thumb if you're um if you're gaining more than point zero two to point zero five percent of your body Fat. weight every week, no, of your body weight body every weight. week, uh, if you're doing more than that, it's probably unnecessary. What's that one a point? Point zero two to point zero five percent. Of your total body weight. Yeah. And that'll be in a couple hundred grams, you know? But if you're gaining like a kilo a week, dude, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> you know? Like you've it, been on the lot, yeah, if, bro. If you're natural and you're just fucking a kg on it a week, yeah, bro, I'm, I'm bulking, bro. It's like, yeah, you're fucking just getting fat, dude. You're just getting fucking fat. And the problem with that is like when you try to cut again, you actually have to cut way longer yeah. and then you end up yeah, losing lose more mass. And it's like you fucked yourself, dude. You just waste the time. Go slow, brother. Dude, you yeah. You want a quick dude, result, I actually, go. I should be eating more. You know what I'm saying? But I you like you how like I... like the lean face. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I like I how feel I feel when I'm not pushing calories too hard. Like, there's a spot. Um, but you also feel like, oh, if I was eating more, I was going to be stronger. And there's yeah, that. Yeah, and I do it. But if my abs start getting real shit, I'm like, nah. Whoopa. Yeah. Uh, I'm like, uh, and I can lean out pretty quick. So mm. I am, I'm like, I'm the same, but I'm still trying to learn how to embrace the little bit of chubbiness. I don't mind a little bit, right? And that's the thing. That's what <laughs> can I've I done. Can I say chubbiness? Yeah, you can say chubbiness. Is that, is that a word? Because I'm <laughs> yeah, creating that's a word. words. That, that chubbiness, yeah. Not channelized. The thing is, right, you just got to accept that it's a little bit slower, you know? And it is. Like, I've done it a slower way because I like staying lean. So my my phases of a surplus is like I do a lot smaller of a surplus. So I stay pretty fucking lean. And and I won't lie, part of it's because I'm not thinking that intensely about it. Like I'm pretty regimented with my food and calories that I have to I have to really be cognizant to push the calories more. And when I do I I feel the benefits. I feel good. I got a question about books. What is a book that really, um, what changed your mindset? What, do you, what did you listen to? Who you studied to change your mindset? 
We're talking about physique and stuff, but what about your mind? What helped to build your mind? Book, you have a, a book, a special book, or a, a guy, a mentor, even videos. That actual, that one that was a, a game changer. And that's tough. I got one that is The Power of the Subconscious Mind by Joseph Murphy. Mm. I wrote, <laughs> I actually read to my clients that I gave it to them. Because it actually changed the way I think and to reprogram my subconscious mind to work for me. But someone that you model. I don't think it's one. It's a lot. I know it's Dude, a lot. Like, but there, there were in stages. special like there were books stages. that you can give it to people to read. I don't even read books anymore. When you read, you didn't <laughs> read any books? I used to read a lot. But I, I found mean, self-development I, books. Yeah. Oh, bro. Um, I changed the most when I when I went through it myself, and then was around people who were doing well and learned in person. Like I learned, Boom. I learned way better than when I was reading books. I always bought mentorships that would help me for sure. Did you? Yeah, bro. I've spent a lot of money on um, <laughs> on these courses on online, online courses. Yeah, like I spent like well in the six figures, easy, you know, on just wow investing on yourself. Oh, like that's a no-brainer to me. Like I had to. <laughs> like I didn't have fucking <laughs> I didn't have choice. I didn't. I didn't have fucking choice, man. I had nothing going for me. You know what I'm saying? Like Rather than I don't like saying that, right? Like it's just for me to get to that next level. I was very aware. Ty Lopez was the first guy I actually bought. A, uh, I bought his 67 steps. It was, that was like the start of my mindset changing. I remember when like my mom was like, it's a scam, this, that. And I'm like, no, I'm going to fucking do it. It was like 67 bucks. It's like all the money I had back in the day. <laughs> and then I bought it. Through, yeah, 67 steps. And every day was like a different message. It was great, man. Like it was, it was the start of my development, right? Like when I was young. How old were you? I don't know, 15, 16, 17, 16 or 17, I would say. And uh, that, that was like the start. But since then, man, I've had all kinds of different mentors and different areas, and I learned shit from all of them. Um, and I paid my way, you know, and you got to pay because you take it seriously. You know, when it's free, actually, I would still take free shit serious, but I'm different. <laughs> like, like, I was very set on changing. But for a lot of people where they don't have enough, like, desire, they almost have to pay to feel motivated enough to implement action. But, um, yeah, I paid a lot in different mentorships and be, being part of masterminds. And I honestly, though, it was really leaving the hometown that started shifting me really different. It was actually just changing my landscape and being around different people. Because it's, it's just different, man. You register shit different. And Craig too, man. Like he, he was there for a very big shift in my... That was probably one of my most recent shifts was from Craig. You know? Just people. People. People who you can real, actually... Real. You know what the difference is, bro? Like a book, it's great. You'll read it. And especially when you're at a certain level, you can, you can question how I can this apply to my current stage in life and so on and so forth. Sure. It's great. But when you're there with the person, you're seeing how they do things, you're taking the energy in. You're feeling. Yeah, you, you feel it. It's com it hits it's com you yeah. different, man. That's why the it environment's so strong. It hits you different. Like, you've got to get around it. And that's why the whole lone, lone wolf mentality is a dangerous one. Yeah, I used to have it. Same. Yeah, I used to have we it. All, I think we all and people would find stage. pride in it. And I'm like, you shouldn't. Self-made man. You shouldn't. Because if you actually want to play the game of leverage... Right? The more people, the better. The, the saying is the more hands you shake, the more money you make. Right? More energy. And how many times have you heard of people or seen people and they had an opportunity that you didn't have because they knew someone and you felt it was unfair. And, they, and you felt it was unfair because you work hard. It's not about how hard you work. It's about who you also know. who you fucking know. So if you don't know how, it's who. It's, it's who, not how. That's it. So just stop validating yourself just through your work. It's not. Right, you also got to be smart. Go out there and meet more people. Life's a game, saying. man. You got to know the rules of the game. You got to know the rules of the game. 
and it contacts man it's not just how hard you work it's not I start talk like this you can talk like it's that fucking, it's fucking contact it's cool you know man but you you gotta you gotta do both though because there's times to put your fucking head down you have to but you have to also understand that if you want an unfair advantage go and provide value to as many people as you can Boom. just go Be and humble value. and serve serve Serve, and brother. just trust that you'll you'll be taken care of. You will. It's and by a the way, when yeah, when you serve, don't serve expecting expecting shit. anything. Just fucking serve. Do it because <laughs> first of all, you're doing something good. But if you can do it with the understanding that shit does come around, you know. The thing is, it's like we can go deep into it. Like everything. Is it's already there, right? That's a whole other rabbit hole. But understand this: if you so can just go deep, brother, <laughs> you'll be taken care of. You know, if you're if you're living that way, because your vibration and your energy is different, right? And then you're starting to step into a different playing field because who you are and the energy that you're emitting is attracting the kind of people that, first of all, you want to be around and would provide the opportunity that you wanted. But the thing is, is that to tap into that energy, you have to not be thinking that way. You have to almost just be new, be that person, right? Which how how did we meet? How did did we meet each other's? You spoke to me. No, you spoke to me. No, you 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 made a comment. You said the girl who worked there looks like me. No, because I, I I saw you. You were on a phone, like very confident, talk with. Lion and blah blah blah, walking with the string on and the, rub, the wife beater on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was looking at you, and it just came to me, "Do I know you?" And I was like, "No, you do." <laughs> and that was it. I made a comment about the girl. Uh, you made a, and that, you because you said something. Oh, no, I didn't say anything. I was just looking oh, at you. I was like, so "I did." Okay. Yeah, I was just looking at you. I was like, "This guy." Who's this guy? Yeah, but the thing is, right? Like, Who's this lion walking around <laughs> here? And this is the thing, right? Like, I can, I can walk into a room. And, and you just feel the energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like you kind of know when someone. <laughs> you kind of know. You know, and I did see you. And I was like, oh, interesting. Like, this guy looks like he does something. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and I'm like, that's the thing. I just want to, I just want to be around people like that. You know, there's actually zero you expectation. Dude, it's literally, I want all the action. This is the thing. Growing up, I had massive FOMO. It means fear of missing out. Because I had none of the action. I was isolated. Now that I've developed the skills to be able to take advantage of that, I'm like, I want all, I want to be where all the action is. I don't want to miss out on anything in life. I want to be there. Dude, I want to experience it. Like I want to know, I want to know all the people. And you kind of I want to build the fucking that. business. You create that opportunity. Created it. You like, create I'll it. create that shit. You know what I'm saying? I want to experience life to the fucking fullest. You know, because I didn't experience it at all, like barely growing up. So now everything I do, it's from extreme amounts of FOMO. Like if I see someone and I'm like that person's interesting, and I didn't go and talk to them, I'll leave and I'll feel bad. I'll be thinking about it. I'll be like, fuck. Same. Shit. You know, but like, I should have said something. I should have. Same. And we do that sometimes, dude, right? Yeah. We doubt ourselves. Yeah. And, and by the way, it still happens every now and then. And I'll, I'll course but correct. But you keep training. I'll course correct. You keep training. Dude, last week, uh, Saturday night, the, the pavilion, I saw a car parked outside. I knew who, whose car it was. And then I was, I was with someone. They're like, oh, like, do you want to eat? And I said, yes, but we went somewhere else. And I knew I should have gone inside because I would have ran into that person and I would have said hello. You knew and it. I wanted to. And then I left and I was like, why the fuck did I not go inside it? Out. Dude, and I was disappointed in myself. I was like, what the fuck was that? You know? So I have extreme amounts of FOMO. And that drives me to really, you know, when I see possibilities and How opportunities. How do you overcome fear? Look, it's, it's interesting, right? Because you can say, just do it. But at the same time, what really can help is already seeing yourself as the kind of person who doesn't have fear around doing that thing. Visualizing yourself doing that thing. Being the kind of person who doesn't have fear around doing that thing and then stepping into that person, therefore the fear eliminates. 
you change your perception completely. That's one way. <laughs> it's very it's a very interesting one because I some things that used to scare me. If you ask me about it now, it doesn't scare me at all. Um, the, even the thought of it, but it's funny. I haven't even done some of the things that previously even the thought of it would have scared me. But when I think about doing it now, it doesn't scare me one bit. Why? Because I visualized myself do it so many times. And I visualized myself as the person, the kind of person who would have done it. I have no fear around it. I'm like, yeah, obviously. You're ready for it. Obviously, I'm the kind of guy who would do that shit. It's not fucking scary to me. I just developed so much. And I became the kind of person who's just not scared of doing that thing anymore. So now when I'm presented with the opportunity, I'm not going to be fucking scared. You're ready. I'm ready, bro. I'm already prepared. that guy. That fucking guy. Wow. It's you know? like right now. You're ready. We're, you're ready for this podcast. Dude. Because you, you visualize yourself doing this so many times. Dude. Like huh? this, Yeah. Li no, Literally. Th yeah. Dude. I've always you known. Knew it. I've always known I'm going to go. I'm going to speak. You know? Um, another thing is, and I think you're going to go where I'm going to go, where I want you to go. When you feel loved, when you're like, mm, I feel loved. I just feel, I love myself. I feel loved. The way I am, you're not scared. You know when you love someone and you're happy and you're not scared anymore, you don't, you don't care. When you have someone, they love you. Some, sometimes we need someone to love us so we can feel loved, mm. right? And you can tell someone when, you, when they're with their partners, they feel loved, they are happy, they're confident. But when you're by yourself and you still have that same confidence that you feel loved no mm. matter what, Did you get what I said? That's powerful. That's powerful, man. I'll even say, like, there, there's times where I'm guilty of not being completely loving to myself. Awesome. Even still. There's still times and I'm like... It does. I'll yeah. doubt myself. I'll fucking, you know, I'll... Yeah, like, I won't have that... But when you're full of love, you don't, you don't fear. You don't have fear. I, I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. And that's the thing. That's... That's part of why as well. Like me and my work ethic is, I'm very aware a lot of it is a, is a way to overcompensate for the lack of self-love I have sometimes, you know? But I won't say that it's like that all the time, you know? It's a thing because social media makes us compare ourselves to other people so we feel unloved. Mm. So you judge yourself, you compare yourself to someone, which is not even a real thing. And then you don't love yourself anymore. Yeah. You just... Well, what it, it's, also, it's also... It's also... Sometimes it's, it's almost like a lack of self-worth. Yeah. You know, because you want to prove to yourself. To know who to you are. Yeah. Then you start to seek it from other people and that's where you can get in a trap. I used to be in that trap all the time, bro. Like heavily, heavily. Now, way less of a degree... Maybe an old thought would come back every now and then. I'm very quick to reprimand it and understand. It's an old thought pattern. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you, you, you can get out of it. Uh, you just need to be aware. You need to be aware. And that's the thing. Like, we are all just fucking human. Like, we're really all human, man. Like, you can look at someone. Like, back in the day, I used to be super intimidated by, like, big jack tatted motherfuckers. I would, I would feel literal resistance of, like, holy fuck. Like... We do. It's you know? intimidating. The, but that's the thing. If you think about it, even those motherfuckers, like I can go talk to them now. It's just a person, dude. I'll talk to them now, shake their hand, have a it's conversation. So cool. I'm like, we're no fucking different. But the thing is, for me to get to that place. To get to that place, you got to be humble and understand your self-value. But I had self -value. to fucking work on really yourself. work on myself. You know, I had to build myself up to a point because there's a degree of status in this world that just simply exists, you know? You got more muscle, you're going to stand out more, right? You didn't look at me for no reason. There's a status game at play that is always there. You know what I'm trying to do? I'm training at the moment. I was doing this. I was very vanity. Is that the word, the vanity? vanity yeah. Back, back then when I was a teenager. And now I was training myself with someone to try to present myself in public not as good, not as like, Just to train myself for self-improvement. Look in the mirror. Oh, yeah. I don't look good. Okay, I'm going to go out anyway and feel confident. Even if I don't look good. Mm. And try act like I don't look good. Not just put in a, a posture. I know it, it's good. But if you train yourself to actually look ugly and be comfortable looking ugly in front of other people. <laughs> it's 
good way to train. That's definitely training, right? It's interesting. You, you got to detach so much, so much you know? to the image that 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 can be a good challenge. I can. It's see. a good challenge. Yeah. Like you mess up your hair, go ugly, like and try walk with confidence in the room, knowing that you don't mm. look as presentable that you know that you can be. Yeah, <laughs> that's definitely that's definitely a, a good challenge. It's a good challenge, yeah. and try post pictures like that. Go on your stories and do a story like. Not looking as great. That's true. Like that's a that's a big thing, which is like not posting certain things because of insecurity. Yeah, it's massive actually. And yeah. I'm trying to do the opposite. All right, it do, if it doesn't look natural, don't post it. If it looks natural, it's me. Like, okay, post it. I got it now. If it's if it's too unnatural, don't post it, please. Yeah. Straight up. Yeah. It's look. There's a lot of uh, societal pressures that we that we put on ourselves. You know? That's um, Craig's crew. Self-validation. Dude, Craig's crew, they don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck, man. They don't care. I've got degrees of it, man. Like, I, like I'm very aware of, like, how I look, angles. Like, I've definitely got degrees of it. I, I'm not afraid to admit it. We you know? all do, man. Why do, you think, why do you think I started fitness? <laughs> it didn't start from the place of, look, I train now because I understand that I will look good from it, but I also enjoy it a lot as well. So it's, like, actual different reasons. Multiple. It's one of the outcomes. Yeah, like I actually just fucking love training, but um, it became the passion. Yeah, it became a passion. Crazy crew, man. They they just so like content, they're content with themselves. You know that the person you see in the mirror, it's not you. Is that weird if I say that? The person you see in the mirror is just a phase of what you've been through at the moment. When you look yourself thirty, <laughs> thirty years ago. When you look yourself 10 years ago in the mirror, it was just a 17 kid. And now you look yourself, all right, it's a good looking bloke. It is a sexy motherfucker. Mm-hmm. What about 50 years? You look yourself in the mirror, it's an old person. It's funny. Like you can and it's not you. You can completely detach though, which is like, this is just a vessel. Be more than a person you see in the mirror. It's just a vessel. It's just a vessel. Know? It's just a vessel. We're all just fucking energy. Yep. No, so don't attach yourself to the person you see in the mirror. Be more than the th- that. The, th- the thing is, right? Like, I think you need a balance of both. I think you do need to be aware of how you look and you present yourself. Yeah, but we do that too much nowadays. It's, yeah, it's unbalanced. For it's sure. unbalanced. But the thing is, it's like, I still try to maximize everything in, in a lot of ways. Maybe not to certain degrees. But at the same time, I also do the work on the other side. Understanding those concepts. So I balance both. Because I understand that we're still playing a game. Right, I understand that I have gotten a lot of food in the doors from my presentation. You know, so I'm still playing a game. Now, if you ask me, it is a branding day, game, dude. If you ask me, like, what life's about, I wouldn't tell you. It's about how you look and fucking this and that. No, like, it's not. Like, I understand that. But there is a game. It's just a time and place, and you you gotta be you gotta understand the the parts and the place that elements have and that's where i think people get a bit too uh they get a bit too like one-sided to be honest they're like completely spiritual and shit and then they look like absolute shit and you don't want to fucking talk to them <laughs> you know what i'm saying uh-huh. i'm like i'm kind of embarrassed to be around you <laughs> like there's just there's just you don't want to be too far each way yep you know what i'm saying but i guess it depends on the rules of the game that what game you're even playing because those what people who are playing? that full that spiritual route they may have found people who have the exact same thought and they've lived a happy life look great for them man like honestly like they're fucking one i guess i'm just not willing to right and that's the game i've chosen to play here's the thing right you can choose what game you want to play and accept the repercussions of that game because every game has its own which game are you playing yeah which game and you have to accept the repercussions that get Which that game you're playing. You have to accept the process. You know, I accept that there's going to be periods of maybe potential insecurity if you're going to play on the looks game, because there's always going to be someone better looking. You know, better genetics, symmet- sy- symmetrical face, better muscle bellies, taller. But this is a, a, what self confidence is for me. When you walk into a room and you don't compare yourself to anybody else. I agree. Anybody I else? Agree. There's always gonna be Contentment someone himself. above yeah. and below you. Can, I, if I you walk you. in the room and you don't compare yourself to anyone else, 
That's something. Only self confidence. That's something. Yeah, I, I've truly because you have unique shift. qualities that only yeah. we will have. That that's the thing. Like, it took me a long time to make. To understand. Shift. You know what self confidence is for me? It's when you walk into a room and you don't compare yourself to anybody else. Have you thought about that? You walk into a room and you don't compare yourself if you look better than someone or if someone looks look better than you. You just know who you are and that you have unique qualities in self. Yeah, worth it. You know your self worth. It took me a long time to make that shift. But it does. It took me a long time. You know? a lot of work on myself and here's the thing though i had to i had to get a lot of references life references. you're turning around right sorry i had to get a lot of life references to realize it it's very hard to get to that point unless you had great self-esteem growing up from your upbringing um it's very hard actually to make that shift unless you've seen all kinds of people worked on yourself at the same time when I when I put myself in different environments, when I went to people who I thought were like top shit, and I realized that they have their just, they have they their have things, things, and then you're like, holy fuck, everyone everyone has it. Everyone feels this way to a degree. Mm-hmm. Like they they had they had they're doing the same shit. I'm like, <laughs> they holy, I'm like holy fuck. I'm like, <laughs> when you understand so that, this whole time I put them on a boom. pedestal. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, this is just a fucking person. I'm hungry. I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'm going to fucking burn. <laughs> you know what I mean? What do you, what do you want to eat next? And they're just like kind of just fucking chilling out. I'm like, dude, like you're fucking lazy, bro. Like some of these people who I, I, I used to be like, that person's so successful. I'm like, you're so fucking lazy. I'm like, your character's weak. You know, like they, they had financial success, but the character was weak. And then when I started realizing those things, I was like, ah, oh, I'm actually not that bad. <laughs> You know, literally, <laughs> I was like, I'm actually not that bad. <laughs> so get around the people, man, because if you've got any kind of fucking worth ethic, ethic you realize you're not that bad. And the more you meet re- highly successful people, you notice that how simple they are. Oh, man. How simple Craig is. Yeah. Like, like Craig, Craig, Craig's fucking great, man. And he's smart. How simple and humble they are. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just like, Rich people are but, simple, but man. But then you realize, but then you realize, remember, every moment is just the present moment. Like, what's really special other than you're in this moment and you have an action to then take? So, if I'm just doing the best course of action at every single moment again, that's my sense of self worth. The same way, like, that they, the same way that they are also in their fucking vessel at that present point, point in time for them as well. And they're making a decision whether to step into their full potential or not at that point in time. So when I realize that, and I'm like, okay, this is, let's be binary about this, right? We're all in a present moment and then making a decision on the next best thing. If I'm choosing my fullest potential, at least what I think it is at every point in time, and even though they have more wealth than me or whatever it is, but they're not, Who's actually got a better character? Who's got a better character? Who? Well, is it the one who's choosing to step into what they think is their full potential at that point in time or not? Would you say the one who was willing to employ the discipline and do the tough thing out of knowledge that that's the best course of action at that point in time? has a stronger character than the other one who may have more financial status but he's a lazy fuck. So what I started doing was I started judging off character. Not the outside shit. Not the what? Not the the outside shit. It's just a reflection, right? Like they're at a different stage in their journey. I can't help that. But what I can help is Am I stepping into my strongest character at every point in time? Right now. Right now. If I can keep ticking that box, I feel Mm -hmm. fucking good about myself. Yeah? Because it's just a matter of time. I look at that guy, he's sucking. I'm not. You know? Because you're in the present moment and you're doing the best you can right now. That's it. That's it. I'm, I'm choosing to live 
in accordance with my my morals, my values, and also to step as much as I can into my potential. And your best is different than mine. Yeah. And that's when you don't compare yourself to other people. Well, because my, you know my form of validation changes. My form of validation becomes, am I doing what is deemed the best course of action right now? Yes or no? <laughs> If it's no, sure. I have permission to feel like shit. If it's yes, good. Keep doing Keep what you going. should be doing. Keep going. Don't worry about the rest. Just sort itself out. You make the best decision. That's it. And I do that. Just do that every fucking day, every moment. When you, and then when you start slacking and you notice it, you're aware, you, re, you reconnect. That's it. You, you become aware of it, you recorrect. Like, okay, I'm slacking. Go do some shit. Pump your state up. And then go back to it. Go back to what you need to do. All right? And if you can do that, and every now and then you slip, well, guess what? You're still going to do way fucking better. Your ratio of productivity will be so much higher, even if it's not perfect. Because I don't expect perfection, I expect progression. So if I can just keep working on doing my best as much as possible, and when I don't do my best, do my best to then do my best, even if it's not the best, I'm definitely going to have a better outcome. So you can actually keep shit really simple that way. And you can, you can give yourself peace of mind. Because a lot of us attach our state to external circumstances that aren't always in our control. And I'm guilty of it. But it's to remind myself and everyone else of exactly what I just said. So just focus on the now and what's the next best course of action. And if that forces you to sit down and think differently, because by the way, what most people think is the best course of action usually isn't. So if you can do your best to keep debunking yourself and realize that your mental model right now probably isn't enough to get to the next level because it's gotten you to where you are right now, then how can you keep finding ways to debunk it? Now, the answer to that is to get around people with different perspectives who are where you want to be. That's the answer. So keep trying to debunk it, get to the next level mentally. So then you can start taking smarter actions. So your quote-unquote best course of action is better from a different perspective. You can keep course correcting and navigating until... You create whatever it is you want to create. That was a good short right there. It's a long one. <laughs> It's a lot of shorts right there. That's it. That was very good. What do you say? Wrap it? Do you want to say anything? Add anything? I like that you. And I think that's the way to, it's a lifestyle we live that we overflow the things we know. That's it. And it's just a lifestyle. That's why you can, you said that you can talk here for ages because you're just overflowing these things that you like. And I want to die empty, man. I want to, yeah, overflow the things I know, the things I learn. So this I can die empty and be like, oh, yeah. I teach what I learn and I apply and I teach But this is like 0.001% of the thoughts and the, the shit that I think about. And, you know, like every day is a process, man. Mm -hmm. you know, that's why it's overflowing because my personal development never stops. I've always got shit to talk, So, yeah, it's filling about. it up and then the overflow. Fill it up yeah. again, overflow. Yeah. But if you hold it. Dude, you could, you could fucking wake me up in the middle of the night and be like, yo, like, you just talk about this real quick. And I, like, I'll be able to fucking, you know, Talk spit, spit, spit some shit. You know? we, I went to a, don't wake me up a networking event. 
and we sat on the table. So we choose a word, some words in the, in the beginning of this event. Uh, Got to choose a word, blah, blah, blah. So gratitude, persever pers perseverance, whatever, whatever word you want to choose. I choose gratitude, and then you sit with the people that choose that word. And then I sat with these people. And there was this guy who we were talking about, oh, I do this, I have this business, blah, blah, blah. And this guy was like, I don't have anything yet. I already, I already read 300 books about self-development and blah, 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 and haven't done anything. So it's not about what, you, what you've been studying for a long, long time. If you read 100, 300 books, if you don't apply that knowledge and you don't overflow that, it doesn't mean shit. Go fuck up a little bit. Go fuck, up a little, go fuck bit. up a little bit. I was like, you read 300 books and you haven't done anything. I read two books and I'm already teaching. Yeah. I used to do that. like read a lot. Study a I lot, study a lot, study a lot. I'm not prepared, I'm not prepared, remember, I'm not I prepared. Don't, I don't remember like fucking almost any of it. <laughs> Literally. So yeah, remember. apply what you learn, apply what you know right now. Then teach other people. Overflow. Don't hold it to yourself. Put that ego down. Go teach someone. Go learn more and overflow what you learn. And this way, and you grow fast. Boom. Wrap it. Cool. Yeah. I'm hungry. Let's, uh, let's wrap it there. Let's eat, some, let's eat some steak. It's fucking protein. <laughs> <laughs>